saying the questions out loud and I can do that because I have a printout of the questions. Um, they release that as a press release so they can follow along. Not only would be very fast for them to have a conversation because the school is really far away. So it's out here, it's a little bit rainy because we're dealing with the remnants of Hurricane Patricia, but it's gonna be here in about a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the antenna up and we'll listen to astronaut Phil Lindgren. For the questions. How do you brush your teeth? Hey, honey, and thank you for that question. Um, brushing your teeth in space is one of the things that really doesn't change too much. We don't have running water up here, so we have to squirt water on our toothbrush with a little drink pouch. But other than that, uh, we brush our teeth normally. Um, but because we don't have a sink, we just have to spit the toothpaste into a into a, uh, a tissue. Over. What do you do if you get ill or hurt? Great question, Stavros. We have uh, medical supplies up here, medicines, as well as medical equipment. And all of the astronauts, all of the crew, have been trained a little bit on uh, how to use that uh, medication and, and equipment. We have a flight uh, surgeon, a doctor that sits in mission control that can help us if we have any, uh, if we need any help. And my background, I'm actually an emergency medicine doctor. So if any of my crew mates get sick, I'll be able to help. Over. What is the official language on board the International Space Station? I mean, it's a great question because it is an international space station. We have many, many partner countries, and uh, right now we have three Russians, uh, two Americans, and one Japanese astronaut. Uh, so we all speak uh, English on the U.S. segment of the uh, space station, and we try to, and of course our Russian colleagues speak Russian to each other, and when we're together, we mix up uh, Russian and English a little bit. Over. How would you describe the feeling of being in space? Lynn, thank you for that question. Um, I would describe the feeling as exhilaration. It's so wonderful to be up here, to be able to float around. It's something that I've dreamed of doing for uh, as long as I can remember. And uh, so I'm, I'm very excited and honored that uh, this dream has come true. Over. What do you eat in space? Thanks, Sarah. Um, we have a pretty diverse menu. We have a food laboratory that helps make the food for us. We can't cook up here with uh, re ready ingredients. So instead, we have foods that need to be heated up in pouches, or we have dehydrated food. Um, and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, so my favorite meal right now is uh, beef steak and uh, barbecue brisket. Over. Do you see the Earth, Sun, and Moon rotate? Mohammed, great question. You know, we see the, the Sun pass over the top of us, just like you do. Um, and we see the Moon pass over the top of us as well. The thing that we notice the most, though, is the Earth below us, because we're going... 17,500 miles per hour, and so we see the Earth pass below us very quickly. We end up seeing 16 sunrises and sunsets over the course of 24 hours, and it's beautiful. Over. What was it like when the supermoon lunar eclipse came into your view? Bill Rita, thank you for that question. I wish I had a great answer for you, but unfortunately, the lunar eclipse happened at 2 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Monday morning, and so I made the decision to to just go ahead and sleep so that I would be ready for work on Monday. Um, so I'm, I imagine, though, that many of you got a wonderful look at that, uh, that neat uh, um, space phenomenon. Over. What is your most recent successful experiment you have done at the International Space Station? Well, Holly, thank you for the question. You know, we have many experiments that are going on, at, and, and so there's no experiment that's really completed while we're up here. I'll tell you that my favorite uh, experiment so far was working on the veggie experiment, and that's where we actually grew lettuce here on the space station, and then we were able to eat it at the end. So I, I made it into a cheeseburger. Over. How do you sleep when there's no gravity holding you to a bed? Great question, Samantha. Some people have a hard time sleeping without gravity. Um, some people like, we all sleep in sleeping bags, and some like to strap their sleeping bag to the wall to give them the sense of pressure on their back like they're sleeping at home. I like to sleep floating, so I just have one tether strapping my sleeping bag to the wall, and then I get into it, and I just float in that in my crew quarters, and I sleep very well. Thank you. Over. How do you stay fit in space? Brooklyn, we have three different exercise machines, a, a bicycle exercise cycle, a treadmill, and then we have a resistance machine to, so that we can uh, lift, kind of like you were lifting weights. And all three of those help us to stay healthy, help to keep our bones strong, Muscle strong and heart and health condition. Over. When you were about to take off, how did you feel? Um, yeah, I was uh, very excited, and it's kind of like I feel today. Actually, we have a spacewalk scheduled for tomorrow, 
so Scott Kelly and I will be going outside of the space station, and so there's this feeling of anticipation and excitement, and, uh, and really looking forward to the challenge. Over. Do you have any side effects when you return to Earth? Well, a great question. You get used to living in zero G, so when you get back to Earth, gravity feels kind of like a bummer. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to move around. Um, you get kind of dizzy because you're not used to gravity pulling down on your inner ear, on the, the organs that help you maintain balance. But it, after a few weeks, you feel back to normal. Over. How do astronauts cope with the psychological stress of being away from their families and friends for a long time? Thanks, Nada. That is, uh, that's a great question. And it's probably the biggest challenge for me is being away from my wife and children. Um, but we have lots of tools up here with a, a phone that we can call back down to the Earth. We get uh, video conferences every week. And, uh, and so that does a great job of uh, keeping, us, uh, keeping us close, even though um, you know, my family is far away. Over. How does our digestive system work in space with no gravity? How does the food go down the throat and stomach? Great question, Samira. That's uh, something that our space doctors were actually very concerned about before we sent the first humans into space. And it turns out that the digestive system can work without gravity. You have uh, smooth muscle um, tissue in your digestive system, and it kind of works to squeeze the food along and keeps it moving, uh, just as if you were on the Earth. Over. How long can an astronaut stay in space before having to come back to Earth? Well, Khadija, we don't know the answer to that yet. That's what we're that's part of what the, we're trying to determine here on the space station. And Scott Kelly, one of my crewmates, is going to be up here for a year. And this is all in preparation for um, the, the possibility and the goal of going to Mars uh, by 20 um, in, in the next uh, you know 10 to 20 years. And uh, astronauts that do that will be gone for maybe two to three years. So we are trying to figure out ways to keep people healthy for that long duration. Over. Is there a way that the space rocket ships could reduce the amount of energy they use? I think we're almost at the end of the pass here for me. Well, Ibrahim, um, a certain amount of energy is required to get up the incredible velocity of 17,500 miles per hour in order to get into orbit. Um, we are looking for other ways to provide that energy. You know, we use chemical rockets right now, but uh, we need need to figure out new ways to, to make uh, space travel cheaper. And so maybe you could study engineering. You and your classmates can figure out how to do that. Over. And how does not having a normal day-night cycle affect your sleeping and waking hours? A-A-U-T-U-S-N-A-1-S-S. How do you read it? Aha, he's losing them. That's it. Okay. We did it. We got him. We got astronaut Kel Lindgren talking to Dearborn school system in Detroit, or right outside of Detroit, Michigan. I did a cool thing setting up my gear because it's electronics and you don't want that to get wet. So let me show you the um, the setup. Here we go. There's the radio, and there's the battery, there's my phone which I use to record, the, uh, the radio display, and then a little microphone, and that's to record the ambient sound and my, my speaking. And then I've got another recorder here hooked up to the radio so I can get perfect audio off the radio. And this is just a cardboard box. And this is actually a, it's a shower liner. And here's some peanut butter if I get really hungry. I got two of them actually. No, seriously, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat the peanut butter, but I needed something to keep this down for the wind. And here's the question. They got through, all the way through 16 and they only had 20 so that's pretty good so here's the pass details for me at the top and the pass details for dearborn or detroit at the bottom i labeled it detroit and you can see the elevation right there 14.9 for me 53.4 for them and you can see the azimuth and it actually started right over here and then the middle of the pass was right here and the end of the pass was over here Cool. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. This is John Breyer, KG4AKV, in the rain, listening to Astrodots from Space. Peace, 73. This is KG4AKV. Bye.